Hello everyone. So I'm going to talk to you guys today about an interesting biological concept called a ring species. But before we dive into that, let's talk about what the word species is. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have a good idea of what a species is, but our scientific definition is a group of similar individuals who can all interbreed and produce offspring with one another. Now the ring species is an interesting concept because it kind of challenges our idea of a species because nature doesn't always like to fit perfectly into our scientific definitions of things. And to really talk about what a ring species is, we're going to talk about a certain group of animals known as the Encinita salamanders. Okay. So I'm going to put a diagram of an, of the Encinita salamanders range map on the screen. That way my very poorly drawn diagram is going to make a lot more sense for you guys. So as you just saw in the actual map of our salamander populations, this species is broken into seven different subspecies, all kind of with their own area around the Central Valley of California. So a subspecies is going to be the level right below a species, because sometimes two, thing, two groups of organisms might be the same species, but because of some sort of obstacle like mountains or rivers, they aren't quite interbreeding as much. So they're slowly starting to diversify into a new species. Interbreeding means that the animals within that group, in this case are salamanders, when they breed, their babies are born healthy and their babies have a chance of growing up and having their own babies. So for instance, if you were to breed a tiger and a lion, they all have a baby, which is known as a liger, but that liger can't go and breed because of some health defects going on from the breeding. So it's a really interesting example that kind of challenges our idea of what a species is. Because in this ring around the California Valley, we have seven different populations of these salamanders, and the populations can interbreed only at certain points. So for example, population one and population two can interbreed, population two and three can interbreed, four and five. So all around the area of the ring, they can interbreed until you get to the very end. So you get to population number one and population number seven. If you were to take salamanders from these two groups and put them together and try and breed them, they could not actually breed and they can't make any babies. So that's because over time as the salamanders made their way across the valley and made their different populations, they slowly diversified over time. And that's where this kind of challenging idea comes in of a ring species. Like, do we consider them one species? Because most of them can interbreed with each other, but not all of them. There are a few other examples of ring species. Um, there are different groups of seagulls around the Arctic that kind of show similar patterns, but scientists are still kind of debating the validity of this idea of a ring species. And there are lots of other ideas in the air of what it might be, but I think it's just an interesting concept to talk about and show you that our scientific ideas aren't always 100% shown in nature and we're kind of best just working with our best knowledge. So thanks for joining me on this shorter video and I hope to see you on the next one.